Okay, so as I mentioned, we're gonna do a quick exercise and it's going to be very underwhelming as far as the finished product goes, but it's a good one just to get some practice with um, Paper.js. So actually really simple, four-ish lines of code that you need. All that I want is a grid of circles and the exact measurements don't matter. What I have here is um, a circle starting at zero, zero and every 100 pixels I'm drawing another circle. I think the radius is 10 all the way until 1000. So this is 1000 and 1000 right here. So it doesn't really matter. Just get 100-ish circles on the screen, obviously without doing it manually one at a time. That's the point. So how can you do that? That's up to you. Um, you'll need to figure out how to generate those coordinates, X and Y coordinates that are increasing. And feel free just to make them all purple or all any color. It's not really the point or make them another shape. So try doing a square or a rectangle, or try something more fun where you have the colors on a gradient so that as X gets greater, the color gets redder. Remember, well, I guess not really remember, I haven't told you this, but with Paper.js, you can do RGB colors, hexadecimals, so you can generate a color where you're incrementing the red component or the green component. But at the very minimum, I'm just looking for a grid of circles, at least 100. And if you want, you could also randomize them so that they're all over the place. I just want you to get a lot of circles on the page. Okay, so take a moment, pause the video, try this on your own. I recommend that you get lost in the docs for a bit, try some things out, look at the examples, and then uh, come back and we'll go over a solution. All right, great. So this is what I had before where I left off. And I'm going to get rid of almost all of this code. So we don't want that line anymore, any of that. Let's take a look. So we still have that giant circle, which we don't really need. We will want to keep that code so that we know how to make a circle, but we don't want a giant one. So what we want to do here is use a loop. So we want to use a loop to make a circle here, and then a circle here, a circle here. Basically, we'll add 10 or 100 actually to the X coordinate. So we can start by doing that. So we'll make a loop and we'll start at zero. Whoops, four var i equals zero. i is less than, and this can be anything. I did it as 1000. And actually let's make it X so it's clearer. And each time through, rather than doing X plus plus, which we, we could use to make a circle every single pixel, We'll make jumps of 100. And then all that we'll do is copy this code in to make a circle, but we'll alter it a little bit. If we left it at this, it would make us 10 circles at the exact same point, the same radius. So not what we want. Let's do x, comma, and y will be fixed as 0. So that should make us a line of circles all with y coordinate of zero and radius will make 10. And if we take a look at that, refresh, you can see up here, we get 10 circles going across every 100 pixels, we get a new one. So what we wanna do is basically repeat that again. So we have our first time through, we need one of these rows 10 times going down. And the best way to do that is by using another loop. So we want to take what we have here and just repeat all of this. So we can make another loop. And this time, we'll do it for the Y coordinate. So Y should go up until 1000. Y plus equals 100 as well. And I'll walk you through exactly how this works. I think nested loops can be a little bit confusing. If we just change zero to be Y now, that's actually all we need to do. So let's refresh. You see, we get that grid. So not the most exciting thing, but we've very quickly added a bunch of circles. So let's take a look at this nested loop. So I'll do a little diagram. The first time through, X starts at zero. So I'll do it like this, where we have X and Y. Okay, let me capitalize that. So X starts at zero. And then while X is zero, we do this loop where Y starts at zero, just like that. 
And then next time through this y loop, x is still 0, but this time y is 100 because we add 100. And then x is still 0 and y is 200. Then x is 0, y is 300, and so on. I'll do a dot, dot, dot until x is 0, y is 1,000. Or actually, because we have less than, it will only get to 900. And then x changes over to be 100. And then y changes over to go back to 0. So basically, for every x, we're generating 10 y's. So that ends up with us having 100, or 100 iterations. So it's a little confusing, but it helps if you step through this. x starts at 0, y starts at 0, but then x stays at 0 and y goes up to 100, then 200, and we're drawing a circle at each one of those until y then resets, and then x goes and increments. Okay, so kind of, in my opinion, confusing. Last thing that we can do is a small change. We don't actually need to save this to a variable every time. We can just chain this like this. And it's slightly more efficient where we're not reassigning a variable constantly because we're never doing anything with those circles again. We're just making them once. So rather than rewriting and reinitializing a variable every time through this loop, we just make a new circle and give it a fill color of purple. Or let's do yellow. Save, refresh, there we go. Okay, so this was a little bit of a diversion here, but still uh, pretty important. Again, the motivation behind you doing that. Hopefully you did it, but the motivation was for you to just get practice combining JavaScript skills, loops, with Paper.js. And seeing that, all you have to do is call you know a short line of code, and it, it will run a bunch of code behind the scenes to actually make you that circle. Okay, in the next video, we'll actually get on with the show and start really working on our Patatap clone.